is a container. And basically what it does is, I'm going to open up this image here. Okay, this is what a smart object does. A smart object is fantastic. It's been in Photoshop since what, about CS, is it? And uh, up to that time, whenever you did any filtering or you did any adjustments to your photographs, it was destructive. It changed the, all the pixels in the photograph. And then the more you would do it, the worse it would get. But a smart object, what it does is it actually takes whatever you put in the smart object and it, it becomes a container. And then what it does is it references the photographs or whatever assets are inside of there. In this case, before we'd be using video. And so what's happening is when I apply a filter or an adjustment, it's not adjusting that video or the image. What it's actually doing is it's adjusting that container, that smart object container. And then whatever is in that container gets affected by what you do to the container. So let me, let me, just, let me show you. It's, it's a good example here. I've got this picture of this airplane here. Well, it's, you, know, you can see it's superimposed, just cut out and superimposed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. And so I've got two of these now. What I'm going to show you is I'm going to hide one. And then this is just a regular layer. I'm going to shrink this down. Now designers know all about this because you do this all day. And look at this. Now we compare it with the other one by taking it down and back up. Look how much quality we've lost. Because we changed the pixels. We reinterpolated the pixels. Mm -hmm. And we lost that kind of quality. Now if I duplicate this again, I'm going to create another. Let me hide that one off the top. Sorry, go here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another copy of this one just so we can see. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose Convert to Smart Object. So when I click Convert to Smart Object, notice there's a little icon around there now. See that little badge there? That says that this is a smart object. So watch what happens if I adjust a smart object. I'm going to take it down really small. I'm going to take it up really huge. I'm going to take it down really small again. I mean, I'm really messing with this thing. And then I'm going to put it back to its original size or close to it. Look at that. It's lost no quality at all. See, that's still as clean as it was when we first started. So let me show you what happens when we've got a smart object. I'm going to actually duplicate this. So I'm hiding everything else. And what I've got right now just here is I've got two of these smart object layers. Hang on. See that? We've got one, two, right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the smart object. And then what it does is it says, hey, let's look at the contents of that smart object. And that's it there. That's the image. So if we want to make some adjustments to this image, like uh, let me do an adjustment layer on here. And I'm going to change the uh, hue saturation. Let's make it a different color. Say to a blue. And then I want to apply that. What I do is I just close out the smart object, and it's going to ask me if I want to save it. I'll say, yes, I want to save it. And look, both of them are changed now. Why is that? Because the smart object is a container. And even though we've got multiple smart objects, they're still pointing at the same original pixels. Does that, does that kind of make sense? That's why I'm mm -hmm. kind of showing you different ways. It's actually creating instances of it. So there's only one image on there but we're actually creating multiple copies. And then when we apply a filter, I'll get your question in one second. So then when we apply a filter to that, it's not actually filtering the, like here if I go blur and I create a, a Gaussian blur, for example. What's happening here is it creates a smart filter. Because it's a smart object, it creates a non-destructive filter. And I can turn it on and off whenever I want. I can change here. I can change the blend mode of it. See that? And what it's doing is it's only affecting that fil that smart object. That's the container, and then the pixels are pointing to it. So what was the question we had? I thought I had a microphone here. Who's, who had a question? <coughs> Sorry. Um, what happens when you have multiple smart objects? Is that a problem? Yeah, you uh, duplicated the airplane smart <coughs> object. Yes. You pick one of them and you change its color, mm -hmm. but both of them changed. Yes, correct. And you change the, the blur, mm -hmm. and only one of them changed. Correct. So what effects, if I, you may change the size, okay. um, which one's applied to both, which one's applied to one thing? Okay, if, we look at, if you look at it here, see this little, when you see this little icon here, when I convert it to a smart object, let me 
trying to think of another analogy here. Um, it's like taking, it's like, here's, here's some of our pixels here. We've got pixels. And then if we alter these pixels, you know, like I paint these pens, for example. These, you know, say I paint them green, they're going to become green pens. And then if I ever want them to not be green anymore, you know, I'd have to, you know, scrub them clean. But if I put them inside a smart object, imagine this was made out of, you know, plastic, like I took and wrapped it in, you know, shrink wrapped it. And then I painted the shrink wrapping. It gives the appearance of the pan being green, but the pan itself is not green, it's just the shrink wrap. So a smart object, think of it as shrink wrapping whatever the contents are. So when you're adjusting it, you're only affecting that outer wrapper. It's not actually affecting the, mm -hmm. the object itself. It's contained within the smart object. Does that kind of make sense? That was an excellent mm -hmm. analogy. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> well, there were two transitions. Yeah, so well, let me go on from there, and I'll tell you the next step. The next step, what I did is I duplicated that smart object. But because the smart object, what it's doing is, have you ever used Flash? Have you ever used um, Flash? So it's basically, it's like a symbol and an instance of a symbol. Um, so what happens is we, we're duplicating the container, but it's still pointing at, there's only one object that it's pointing at, which is that file. If I double click on it, you'll see that it says here, look up here, it creates its layer two copy, and it's actually a, a PSB. It actually creates another that document. So what's happening is both those smart objects are pointing at that same document. So if I keep duplicating those smart objects, I'm duplicating the container, but there's still only one real object that is pointing towards. So maybe that, that's a little bit more advanced, you know, just, you don't even have to worry about that so much. Which, you change the color, mm -hmm. that was one thing you did, yes. and they both changed. Because there's only pointing at one original pixels. That, that there's only one airplane, but those those are all creating instances of it. I mean, I, I would say, you know what, just stick with the first part that I showed you. The second part's a little bit more advanced, you know. I think where it's confused is if you have the, if you Gaussian this, yes. and both of them Gaussian. No, because I'm only Gaussian that smart object. See right now, we've got two smart objects. And if I want to do the other one, if I hit option and drag it up, and I can apply it to both of them because I just duplicated that smart filter. But what happened is I only filtered one of the smart objects. So it's like, you know, like, like I said, if I get two shrink wrapped objects, I only affected one, not the other one. Right, but if you're in the other file, yes. Could you do anything to that file? Really? Well, well I, okay, that's advanced smart objects. The smart objects can get even more advanced. I can take multiple layers and wrap them together into one smart object. So maybe I shouldn't have gone so advanced. So <laughs> I should have just stuck to the basic. <laughs> yeah. I have a question. Uh, if I use the smart objects and I want to crop it, yes. Now uh, I've been using CS5. I mean, yeah, so let's see, maybe in CS6 it would have been fixed. It will always tell me I have to rasterize it first before cracking it. Yes. How can you, now, if I would like to keep the smart object mm -hmm. and crop it, or sometimes I'd like to use like a different filter, which is not Photoshop filter, but like a Nick filter, mm -hmm. it will also tell me I have to rasterize it first. Right. So how can I keep smart object and you know, continue? Well, there's certain things that smart objects can do and certain things that smart objects can't do. Um, they can do, uh, they, they can't do anything at a pixel level. Um, so if you're going to alter any pixels, you cannot do that to a smart object, such as painting and things like that. That's why it's pretty big that the addition of two things, actually, in the latest upgrade was being able to do those blurs and also being able to do liquify to a smart object is a huge step forward in smart object technology. Some third-party plugins work with smart objects, and some don't. It just it just depends on it's just a, you know it's an advancing technology. I mean, the technology that's on behind the scenes to make this stuff work is pretty incredible. So um, you know, so obviously certain things. If you're going to be altering a pixel, you're going to be chopping something in half. You can't do that as a smart object. At that point, you need to rasterize it. So you know what I would do is my workflow. To, to make a long story short, in my workflow, I work with smart objects as long as I can, and in the stuff that's going to be pixel level stuff that I'm going to break it down, I'll save that to the end. 
And, and if you think about it, say you do 15 different things to your photograph before you start painting on it. If you weren't using smart objects, you know, remember when I took the plane and shrunk it down and enlarged it, shrunk it down and enlarged it? How often have you worked with, with your images or your composites or whatever, and then by the time you're done, you've got the look you want, but it's, the quality is really starting to you know, fall apart, and it starts to get really soft and, and fuzzy. I mean, that happens. But by using smart objects, you can keep it sharp and crisp with nice with edges, and then just do those last little touches, save those for the end. And sometimes you do have to rasterize.